Hey guys, uh, good evening. Uh, the next game that we're going to see in this channel uh, is a game that was played on the Gelfin's channel 2021 on uh, the 10th of June this year. Um, it was played um, uh, on in rounds round two, game seven uh, between uh, Kadel Mal Shari Sarasadat, um, uh, a very strong women's grandmaster from Iran. Um, apologies if I've not uh, pronounced that name correctly. And uh, the black pieces are played by uh, Ramesh Babu Pragdananda, Grandmaster from India. So let's probably just uh, dive straight into the game. So this is a nice game that features the King's Indian defense by black. Uh, so white starts off with d4. We have uh, knight f6, knight f3, g6, c4, bishop g7 and uh, g3. And um, uh, by playing g3, white uh, is, is preparing to... Fian Kato, the light square bishop to g2 and uh, probably castle king side. We have a black castles. Uh, white continues with the plan, uh, moves bishop to g2 and uh, black pushes d6. And with d6, we finally enter into the king's uh, Indian defense. White castles and uh, black moves uh, knight b to d7. And uh, with, with, with knight b to d7, what black is preparing is to push e5 where the knight from d7 will... Uh, will prove to be a strong defender for the pawn on e5. So white continues development, uh, plays knight to c3 and uh, black pushes e5. Uh, white doesn't bother capturing the pawn immediately, it rather uh, focuses on uh, her own development and pushes e4. We have b6, uh, black prepares to free and cat the light square bishop as well from where uh, it will attack the pawn on e4. So uh, white uh, obviously has to prevent the same. So she plays uh, rook e1 and uh, we have e captures on d4, knight captures on d4 and uh, we play bishop b7 continuing with our plan. Um, bishop e3 and uh, we have c6. Um, instead of c6, black would have actually gone uh, something like uh, knight e5 attacking the uh, pawn on c4 and um, white would just simply defend it uh, by playing queen t2, developing the queen, connecting rooks. And uh, from here we would have knight to uh, g4 uh, attacking the bishop, bishop to g5 uh, attacking the pinned piece here and um, the idea over here is to eliminate uh, 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 the defender of the g4 knight and then uh, capture the knight here. So uh, black doesn't allow this, uh, pushes head 6. So we have bishop captures, knight captures and um, if you see this is this is a perfectly equal position for uh, both black and white. Um, but they don't go for this particular line. Uh, after after bishop to e3, we have c6. And um, I think one of the reasons why black actually pushes b, uh, c6 is to take away the uh, b5 and uh, the d5 squares from white's knight. Uh, white continues development and white actually in fact does the same. Uh, she takes away the g4 uh, square from uh, black's knight. So we have queen c7, uh, developing the queen, correcting rooks, uh, rook c1, rook a to d8, putting the rook on the same file as the queen is. So white immediately unpins to avoid any further complications uh, uh, going further. We have rook f to e8 and uh, we have rook c to d1. Uh, both black and white uh, uh, players decide to uh, uh, put their uh, pieces on uh, the optimal uh, d and e files. So we have a6 and uh, the idea behind playing a6 is to probably push b5 and once uh, c captures b5, c captures b5, uh, black would slowly be able to pull, execute a5, b4, attack the uh, knight on c3 and um, have a good game. So uh, white continues development on the king side and grabs a lot of space by playing f4 and uh, we have rook e7. So black at the moment not really wanting to uh, double up uh, rooks on the e file, but um, uh, he leaves his options open. So we have g4 grabbing even more space and also preparing deadly threat of executing uh, g5. And if you look at it, um, white really controls a lot of space in the center and um, it's, it's pretty difficult to play this uh, position with black. Um, the engine gives both white and black um, uh, an equal position, but um, a human would always prefer playing this with the white pieces. So we have h6 preventing g5 and uh, the knight drops back to e2 wanting to uh, develop it to g3 uh, from where it could brilliantly control both f5 and h5 squares. We have queen b8 um, 
knight g3 white continues with, with her plan and uh, we have b5 so we have c captures on b5 c captures on b5 and uh, white pushes a3 to prevent b4 uh, by uh, black so we have rook e to e8 um, uh, pragnananda decides to uh, take the rook back to the eighth file he believes that uh, the both the rooks are going to belong to the eighth file uh, when the lines actually open up so we have queen f2 um, this queen uh, bishop battery is going to be very deadly when uh, the queen la uh, the bishop lands on a7 uh, which would attack the queen and uh, you will see where uh, what uh, this battery is going to do in a few minutes so we have bishop e8 and um, uh, basically vacating the square for uh, uh, the b7 square for the queen in case if there is an uh, attack from uh, the bishop on a7 we have bishop to f3 um, adding adding another uh, defender to the pawn on g4 and um, uh, prague pushes uh, a5 and uh, by pushing a5 what he did was to uh, you know kind of weaken the uh, pawn on b5 which uh, black, white takes uh, advantage immediately so uh, sara sadat she plays um, uh, a7 immediately with an attack on the queen and um, prague has to make a choice he has to either continue uh, on this uh, this la, um, uh, diagonal to keep protecting the d6 pawn or whether he wants to move the queen to b7 to uh, guard the b5 pawn uh, he he decides to uh, play queen to b7 let's let's just pause for pause for a moment and see what happens if um, uh, if if he had played queen c7 so if he had played queen c7 we'll have knight b5 with an attack on both the pawn and the queen queen moves to c6 we have knight c3 moving the uh, knight back we have knight to c5 and uh, bishop to h1 <laughs> this bishop to h1 is a very sneaky tactic where um, uh, the bishop on h1 is protected by both the uh, knight and uh, the king on the g file and uh, if if black is not careful then there could even be plans of uh, pushing e5 opening a discovered attack to the queen and uh, black would be losing a piece and from there on it will be very difficult for prague to even play this game so the queen moves to c7 uh, we'll have knight b6 knight b5 queen c6 um, uh, we have knight captures d6 Rook captures d6, rook captures d6, and queen captures d6, and um, and and finally, the bishop will capture on b5, um, attacking the queen. And uh, wherever the queen moves, it's it's going to be a very good game for um, uh, Ms. Sada uh, because white is actually up two pawns, and um, this would prove to be very very difficult to play uh, with black. So after bishop a7, uh, Prague moves uh, the queen to b7, gives up the pawn on d6. So she plays rook, captures d7, and uh, he drops the uh, bishop back to f8, immediately attacking the rook. So we have rook back to d1, and uh, from here we have queen to c7. Um, <laughs> there, there was actually a fun line where um, uh, you know Prague could have actually played. Queen captures a7, giving up the entire queen. Um, uh, I know you guys would be thinking uh, this is just completely crazy. Where is the compensation? But uh, the compensation comes when uh, Prague would actually have to play bishop to uh, g5 with check, attacking the queen. And um, uh, this bishop is brilliantly defended by the uh, knight on d7. So uh, white will have to actually give back the queen. Uh, we have queen captures, knight captures. And um, this is an equalish position, and uh, the game continues. So, I mean, this was definitely on the cards, uh, but um, uh, Prague continues with just uh, Queen C7. Um, so, Ms. Sarasadat gets the uh, uh, bishop back to E3. Um, she must have noticed that uh, there could be these uh, Queen to A7 captures, so she just wants to avoid this line. So, we have B4 attacking the knight. We have A captures on B4, A captures on B4 and uh, we have knight to b5 uh, this is actually a wonderful maneuver because all that Ms. Sarasadat wants is to remaneuver the knight to uh, d4 uh, from where it will it will be a very good piece and uh, she does that brilliantly by uh, uh, moving the knight to b5 with tempo on the queen and uh, once the queen drops back to b8 then she moves the knight to d4 so we have knight to c5 uh, and uh, this comes uh, with an attack on the e4 pro, uh, e4 pawn so 
if you see the e4 pawn is actually attacked uh, by four of black's pieces and um, uh, there's only one way to save this pawn and that is by pushing e5 so prague removes the right uh, to knight d5 and um, uh, sarasada plays uh, knight to c6 poking the queen and the rook she's definitely not going to win material because um, prague immediately eliminates the knight and um, what white should have actually done is to uh, uh, you know continue playing the game and uh, he should have just eliminated this very strong knight on d5 we would have had um, bishop captures on d5 bishop captures on d5 bishop captures on c5 bishop captures on c5 queen captures on c5 and uh, once the uh, bishop drops back to a8 um, white is definitely up upon um, and if if there's somebody who's um, you know, pushing for anything more than a draw, it's it's definitely gonna be uh, white. White can even choose to uh, exchange a pair of rooks, and uh, this is gonna be certainly for completely fine uh, uh, for white. But um, after bishop capture c6, uh, uh, Sarasada does capture the knight, but um, she captures uh, the c5 knight and. Um, I think what she was actually hoping for was something like uh, bishop capture c5, bishop capture c5, and um, after queen capture c5. Um, yes, uh, the material uh, is completely equal. Uh, white is certainly up upon, and um, white should be preferred here. Uh, but um, after bishop capture c5, there was just one move that uh, white missed completely, and uh, Prague actually finds that move. Uh, uh, so uh, please feel free to uh, pause the video and uh, find the winning idea for uh, Pragnananda while I give you a couple of seconds. So um, for those of you who uh, managed to uh, find the winning idea, so uh, the move is knight captures uh, knight captures h4, um, a, a brilliant move that comes. Uh, with a deadly threat of capturing the pawn on h3 uh, which would come uh, with check and would also attack the queen so if white ever allows this to happen then um, it's, it's it's completely game over so king h2 is played and uh, now um, uh, pragnanada just goes for the kill he plays bishop captures c5 queen captures c5 and then he finally eliminates the undefended bishop on f3 um, white trades a pair of rooks and uh, moves the rook to f1 um, with basically the idea that um, uh, okay see look both of your pieces are hanging if you move the bishop I'm going to capture the knight and if you move the knight I'm going to capture the bishop and um, it's, it's going to be completely fine but there was just one move that uh, uh, white missed here again and that's um, a very cool rook to f2 with check and um, it was in this position that uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda uh, uh, Ms. Sarasadat decided to resign the game and um, what a wonderful victory for uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. Um, why did he resign? Um, uh, it's pretty simple. So white can actually continue giving up pieces uh, to block the check um, or he can uh, or she can move the king. So let's look at what happens if the king is moved to g2. If uh, the king moves to g2 then um, it will be a forced mate in one where uh, we just play knight captures h3 just just look at this uh, the h1 square is covered by the bishop and uh, the entire uh, second rank uh, is covered by the uh, rook so this would actually be checkmate and uh, after rook to d2 you can block um, uh, with the uh, rook on f2 and uh, if rook captures queen captures uh, white would again not be winning a piece because um, after uh, after rook is played to f2, uh, you don't have to capture the rook, but uh, you can play the very nice knight to uh, d3 with an attack on the queen and on the uh, rook. And um, if you move the queen, you're going to lose another rook. And uh, this is going to be completely winning for um, winning for winning for black. Uh, there's, there's really no use playing this game. So, uh, yeah, um, after rook to d2, uh, uh, Ms. Sarasada decided to resign the game and uh, what a wonderful victory for Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. So that's the game. I really hope you do enjoyed it. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, see you soon for another video. Bye.